Welcome everyone, and I'm here to talk about ownership, about digital ownership using blockchain. And we are doing this uh, understanding how to store accounts in blockchain. And I'm coding live with you, at least I'm deploying a smart contract in the blockchain live now to show how this is working. Before that, these are my contacts. Feel free to contact me if you'd like later. And um, let's start on this way. Can you imagine having your favorite social account network blocked? Did it, did it happen with you? No. Or, um, yes, or maybe um, a fake social account. This happened with me a lot and uh, ask money to my friends, like my mom is a specialist in uh, getting, especially on WhatsApp, she gets some messages that's supposed to be me, but she already knows that's not me, but this happens a lot. And this is something that we can avoid using another kind of account that you can prove your ownership. And this is, I'm here to show you how to do that. Um, we are using blockchain. So first of all, uh, yes, if you'd like to get the presentation, is here. And when I talk about blockchain, I'm talking about a kind of system where we have, first, uh, immutability and transparency. This is the basic of the blockchain. So uh, we are talking about systems that we can trust a bit more, and uh, they are not centralized. All the consensus between what's happening in that system is decentralized. So it used to be a most fair system. And this is talking about NFTs, because we are using NFTs to uh, make our asset, to make our account. And uh, an NFT, it's, uh, on a, it will be on the blockchain, and an NFT is a kind of token that is unique. So when we create a smart contract that is an NFT collection, each NFT on this collection will be unique, and each collection is unique as well. So we can guarantee that this will be a unique account that you are creating. And if this is uh, done by your account, it's associating with you, so you can prove the ownership of that. And uh, especially when we talk about digital access, we can think that, OK, we start with the uh, username and passwords, maybe now some of you are using fingerprints or we, even my computer, it's my face to unlock my computer. And then we can evolve more and more to really use uh, NFTs and accounts based on blockchain. It's always evolving. And so why NFTs? When we talk about NFTs, we can talk, imagine that here in this conference, we could have your pass being an NFT as well, happening in other conference more related to blockchain, and, but this is expanding. Uh, and uh, you are, you'll be so proud to have this uh, and to show this and to have this really connected with our, your account. This can be something. And even you can have some kind of privacy if you design the system to do that, or at least for sure you have more control related to your account. This is the point. And here I have some examples for you. Like, do you know that Forbes has a pass that is an NFT to access all the news that happens over there? Or even the other, the access token experiences is related to another um, collection as well. So this is the Forbes that we have uh, exclusive benefits related to this. Or we can have this other one. They are so cute. And uh, yes, it's another kind that you can prove that you are part of some group and uh, nobody can pass this uh, like he, saying that they are you. This is some examples for you. So let's build it. And uh, before I really go to my smart contract, should you have an overview of this, I will share 
after, during the talk, I will share with you a, a Gitbook, a tutorial, and you can do this step by step later. It'll be so fun for you as well. Well, I'm using React Next.js uh, to be my interface, and I got a package to communicate with the blockchain. This is the Vim. Also, I use Solidity. This is the language to program smart contracts, and I have a smart contract to deploy it now, live. And uh, I'm using the Ethereum blockchain, one of the test nets. This is not a real one, but this is a network that is around the world. Anyone can use. We can interact with each other here. And uh, this is two tests. <laughs> Let's go. And this is the tutorial that I talked before. So if you got the other care code, you already have this. So this is easy for you. So I'm going to the code. I'm using this. This is Remix. It's a um, uh, environment to create smart contacts on my browser. So I don't need to install nothing more to create this on my browser. And this is my contact itself. Let's see if this is big enough for you. Can be better. So this. So on my content, I'm defining the version of my language. I'm importing a library that is really creating the NFT for me. NFT has different standards. Uh, and I'm using this kind of NFT standard, the ERC-71. And my NFT is called Open Access. And this is every person that would like to have an NFT, it's only minting a piece on this collection. This is the grant access function. It's so easy. So it's time to deploy this live for you. I'm connected here with my wallet. So we used to have your wallets, and the NFTs will be stored in your wallet for all the owners. And I must uh, unlock this again because I was out. So this is my wallet. I am in the Sepolia test network. And I'm ready because I am connected here. I'm ready to deploy. So if I came here, deploy. What am I doing now? Remix is creating a transaction with the byte code of my smart contract and send it to my wallet. I'm signing this on my wallet and pay a small fee. And then. I can uh, have this published in the blockchain. So if I came here, I'm waiting to have this confirmed. So contract, in fact, is confirmed now. And if I come back, scroll here, I have a deployed contract that I just did now. If I'd like to be sure that I did now, I can prove this for you. Remember, this is transparent. And you can see this as well. So this is a blockchain explorer. And you can see 24 seconds ago, it's now. We are doing this together, OK? So this is the address of my smart contact. Each account or each smart contact has your own address, unique address. I'm copying it. And then I came to my code. This is my code. And I have an environment variable here that is my token address. Let's save it. And before go, uh, I can show what I have here. I have some components related to how I access creating the view itself, uh, checking the access, the constants. I have two images that they are here as well. And uh, I have the ABI is the way that I'm doing the communication between my smart content this front end. And this is. Let's go to the front end itself. It's here. And uh, this will be the end. Oh, no. You, you should not see this now. OK. This is the basic. OK? So first of all, I must connect my wallet with my front end, my application. Let's do it. Probably I must refresh a bit more because I was doing different things a few minutes ago. Let's see if I'm really connected. Local host, yes, I can see here that I'm connected. I am in the right account. This is my application running. And OK, connect. OK, I'm connected now. 
I already authorized this on my wallet. And you can see that I cannot see that beautiful image, VIP image that you saw before. That can be anything you'd like. What is the kind of content that you'd like to unlock with your NFT? You can discover that. So when I click on grant access, I'm creating that pass. So I'm creating one item on my NFT collection that gives me Give me the right, give me the access. So I'm confirming this. And because this is creating from my account, I can prove that I am the owner of this. Let's come back here. It's pending yet. It seems that we must wait. This be confirmed on blockchain. So what's that? On blockchain, when we send the transactions, the transactions will be in a waiting area. And then we are talking about a decentralized network. This network will validate my transaction. And one of the node validators, you create a block including my transaction. The other validators, you say, OK, this is OK. And this is the block in the blockchain. This is the structure of the blockchain. And you can see now that's confirmed. So if I refresh this again, uh, I must create a better front end that refresh this automatically. I didn't yet. You can help me. I connect the wallet again. And now I don't have the grant access anymore because I already have an NFT on this collection that prove my access. So I am a VIP person now for it. And imagine where you can use this. What kind of systems? Any system that today you use another different kind of authentication, you could use this kind of NFTs to authenticate the systems. And uh, nobody can uh, get your password. It's uh, attached with your wallet, with your identity. Even you can create your identity. Imagine, for example, that I used to say that I am an NFT. And each of you are an NFT as well. And why that? Because we are unique. And even if we change ourselves, like I know that I'm being older, I hope to not be fat, but yes, I'm changing. And uh, you as well, and we can say that we are dynamic NFTs. Still unique, but we can have different stats and different things in our NFTs that can uh, update it with us, with our life. This is another thing to you to think about it. So let's come back to my presentation to understand a bit more what I did. And this is the smart content that I show you. Okay, it's a basic, basic smart content. I already talked about it. This is how I integrate this with React. So I'm using this library called Vim, and I'm using Sepolia, that uh, test network. And this is the way that using this library, I can check in my browser if I have some wallet injected. So that wallet that you saw before is, is one of the wallets called the MetaMask, and it's an extension from my browser. And here I'm checking if I have a wallet like that. This is the front end itself. I'm connecting the wallet, getting the information related to my contract, what I need to interact with any contract in the blockchain. I need the address. I just create a new one with you. And I need the ABI, the application binary interface. It means that uh, I must know which kind of functions I have to input or output and which parameters I have on that. And this is that I'm doing on this part. So the front end itself, it's only in that component that I show you before. I'm checking if I have or I don't have the NFT. If I have it, it's good. If I don't have it, so I can't have the access. Could I have more than one NFT? Yes, I can. But in this case, I'm only checking if I have or no. And this is in the same way that I, I was running that uh, application local for you, that this is the local. If you go here, 
you can have that uh, in a published way, and you can test later. In order to you to test it, uh, you must create the wallet. You must install a web wallet in your computer. This is the point. Then you can test this as well. And what more I have to you? And uh, what can you do with this? I already talked about the dynamic NFTs, and this is something really interesting. We have some uh, NFTs related to NBA games as well, and players where you have the card, and the card is updating according with the points of that player. This is real as well. And uh, this is one of the examples. We have examples related to real estate. Imagine that the NFT can represent, uh, for example, an apartment. And you can see the owners. You can see how, how the history related to that apartment, and including proving this. We have this in the government systems, but we could have this in the blockchain as well. And I can tell you that to have this kind of connections between blockchain and everything that we have outside the blockchain is the key now. This is the point. This is the way where you can have systems that can be more transparent, that can be, have more trust. And uh, this connection is one of the key points. And we have tools to do this already. Like, I work on Chainlink, and I didn't talk you what is Chainlink. To you understand a bit more, it's a company created to do that, to connect blockchains with the outside world. This is what we call it oracles. Oracles is to do this kind of connections. And uh, Chainlink has a set of services to do that. And uh, if you'd like to know more, you have our developer hub. In the developer hub, we have content, articles, documentation, and also we used to do some boot camps. And the boot camps are, uh, the last boot camp, it was two weeks, two hours per day. And we starting from zero, create your wallet in the first day, create your first smart content in the second day, and go day by day. The last bootcamp we included did in, in other languages. We did in English, Spanish, Portuguese, and Turkish. Uh, by the way, I am from Brazil, so I did the English, Spanish, and Portuguese. And also Mandarin, we have it, but it was not me. Okay, but it's nice, including to have a local language and to learn uh, in your local language as well. And again, this is the presentation. If you didn't get before, it's your change now. I'm awaiting your questions. Yes, let's go a bit forward. Remain, this is me again. OK, OK, and thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here.